Hey everyone, my name is Brandon Graisley. I'm a high school math teacher. We're going to learn how to solve some simple rational equations. And to do that, I'm going to give you a basic strategy that we're going to go through a few times with some different examples. Um, so, and I'll show you those strategies first, then the examples second. So let's start off with the first part. When you have a rational uh, equation, you typically want to try to factor, if possible, factor all of the parts of it, and then divide out uh, any factors you can. The idea is that that will simplify the expression overall. And I just want to mention one more thing, that when you do that, you have to include restrictions. Step two. Once that's all finished, you're going to clear denominators. And once you do that, you have to uh, list restrictions again, any new restrictions that you've just created or what I'll actually show you, you're gonna, you're gonna be afraid of losing them and that's why we'll write them down. Uh, the third step is to rearrange what you have rearrange to standard form, which is to write it as a polynomial equal to zero. And then last, or not last, second last, you're going to find the zeros or the solutions in the usual way, either uh, by factoring, for example, you could factor you could use the quadratic formula if it's a degree two polynomial. Uh, you might even just graph it and look at the solutions there. And the last step, this is really important, is that you need to check the solutions against the restrictions because some of those solutions might be what we call extraneous where um, they are part of the restriction list and so they can't be used as solutions to the equation. So let's start with the first example. We'll go through all these steps. So 8 divided by 2x plus 5 is equal to 3. And I want to point out that this is a rational equation because we have this fraction here with a, um, a variable on the bottom. Everything's all polynomials everywhere, but uh, we're dividing by one. It's not just a polynomial equation. Uh, so we can't factor anything right now, so we'll kind of skip that part. Let's go on to clearing denominators. That means we're going to multiply both sides by 2x plus 5. Um, I'll write this out long form this time. multiplying both sides by 2x plus 5, and these two here and here are going to divide out. Now when we do that, when we divide these out, or when you do this multiplication, leaving a 1 there and there, you're going to get this restriction. You have to write this down. x can't be negative 5 halves. If you don't write it down and you just have this line written down, You can't tell by looking at this that x wasn't allowed to be negative 5 halves. It's not allowed because that would make this an undefined number over here in the original um, equation. We've modified the equation in a way that, that hides that original information. You can't tell anymore, so we record the information so it's not lost um, because we have to check later, step 5, to see if that solution is, uh, is valid or not. Uh, and now we um, rearrange to standard form. So, so for us, that means we're going to need to simplify over here by expanding with the distributive property. And then you can just rearrange this in whatever way you usually do. Um, I'm going to do this. So x is negative 7 sixths. And this is where I check. Is that the same as the restriction from before? It is not the same, and so we're okay. We, uh, this is the actual solution. All right, second example, a little bit more complex looking. 
2x plus 1 divided by x plus 5. And on the other side, we have 3 divided by x minus 1. So we're going to use the same strategy, multiplying both sides by the denominators to clear those denominators. So I'm going to write this out like just like this now. I'm not going to write out x plus 5 on each side. I'm just going to write it out as a numerator over there, you'll see. So 2x plus 1 will be multiplying both sides by x minus 1, but it will divide out over here. And then on this side, multiplying by x plus 5, and it will have divided out over here. Now at this moment, I must write down the restriction. You can put a comma, or uh, I usually put a semicolon, that x can't be negative 5, and it can't be positive 1. Those are the restrictions. You can kind of read or uh, discover the restrictions when you look right here. You can't have dividing by zeros, so the, what, what would those zeros be? But when you look at this line, if you ignore the top, when you look at this line, you can't see that restriction anymore, which is why it has to be listed off to the side. Otherwise, it, that information has been lost with your little move here, which um, if, if x were negative 5, you would have just multiplied both sides by 0, which basically destroys the meaning of your equation. So now we have, uh, this is going to become a polynomial on each side and we can rearrange everything. So I'll do that now. Now it looks like I've got negative 2x plus an x, so that's minus 1x, minus 3 more is negative 4x, and then I've got negative 16. Okay, so I have a polynomial now, it's in standard form. Um, this looks like I might be able to factor it, I can at least start factoring it, so we'll begin by factoring out 2, leaving us with a simple trinomial. And yeah, this looks good, I've got um, enough to get to negative 8, so that would be negative 4 times positive 2. Now I'll just mention before we finish off here that some folks will write down these restrictions all the way along, like every single line, and uh, some folks might require that. Uh, I think as long as it's clear what the restrictions are, then you're okay here. Um, so what are the solutions to this equation? Well, the solutions are x equals positive 4 or x equals negative 2. Are those numbers in our restrictions list? No. So once again, we're okay. So that and that. Those are the two solutions to this equation. So let me just write this one out. It's, it's quite long, this one. x plus 2 on the top. In the denominator we have x squared minus x minus 6, and that's equal to negative 3x plus 1 divided by 4x squared minus 9. Alright, we've got a lot to work with here. I'm just going to rewrite the numerator, but on the denominator I will rewrite it in a factored form. Uh, that factors as x minus 3x plus 2. And then on the other side, negative 3x plus 1 divided by, that is a difference of squares, that'll be 2x plus 3 times 2x minus 3. Check it out right here, this numerator is x plus 2, and this, the corresponding denominator also has an x plus 2 factor in it. So we can divide that out right now. So let's do that. I'm just going to kind of cross it out with a color here, replacing it with the number 1, because I'm dividing that value out. But when I do, I also have to record that restriction. There are other restrictions, but this one is critical right now. You can't lose it. By dividing it out, I have to make sure I mention that x cannot be negative 2. So you have to record it whenever you remove it, whenever you remove the information that would show it's there. Okay, so now, maybe I'll just rewrite this to so, sort of show you the simplified version. We have x minus, 1 over x minus 3 is negative 3x plus 1 divided by 2x plus 3, 2x minus 3. Okay, now there's, I don't see anything else that I can um, divide out. There's nothing you can do across the equals sign, of course. That would be very, uh, very bad. Don't do that sort of thing. And there's nothing up and down here. Uh, 2x minus 3 is not at all the same as my numerator. 
So I think I'm just going to multiply this uh, back across. So this is sometimes called cross multiplying or clearing denominators. So multiplying one times all this stuff. And then over here, I'm going to be multiplying x minus 3 times negative 3x plus 1. Now, we are at that stage where I need to expand everything, simplify, and turn it into standard form. And I am, I'm going to end up with my original 4x squared minus 9 on this side, because I am just expanding from what I had before. Um, and that's just the way this one worked out. I wasn't able to do anything with this factor, but it was still worth it to me to factor that to see if I could divide something out, adding a restriction to get a nice, simple, um, a much simpler expression. Now I realize as I'm saying this that I have forgotten to do an important step right here. When I did that multiplication, I needed to record some restrictions. So I'm going to add on the new restrictions here. x cannot be equal to, um, well, we already have a negative 2, so I'm going to leave that one there. Um, can't be 3 from this one. And then over here, it can't be negative 3 halves or positive 3 halves. Those are the four restrictions that I have now. Those restrictions would have been really, really difficult to see from the original expression. So factoring this here and letting me see it was a way for me to see what those restrictions must be. All right, now on this side, we have negative 3x squared plus x plus 9x minus 3. Uh, I'm going to kind of collect everything, everything over onto the left-hand side. So that's going to be just an, uh, well, actually, it'll be a 7x squared. And then I have 10x here, so negative 10x here. And then that'll be negative 6 on this side equals 0. All right, so if I were to try to factor this, um, not really seeing how that's going to work out nicely. No, I don't think so. So I'm going to head into the quadratic formula. Let me just write down what I'm doing here. Because this isn't easily factored, I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So to solve this, we know that x is what was we'll called negative b, the middle term, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a, the first um, coefficient, times c, the last coefficient, divided by 2a. So this is only true when you have it in this standard form, equals 0 for a quadratic. So that's negative b would be positive 10. And that'll be 100 when you square it, minus 4 times 7 times negative 6, divided by 2 times 7. So we're getting into some kind of large-ish numbers here. Uh, let's see, uh, 7 times 6 is 42, doubling it's 84, doubling that is 168, and we're going to be adding to 100, 268. And then we have 14 on the bottom. Uh, let's see, that is 10 plus or minus. Uh, that would be 25 and 42 is 67. So that's root 4, root 67 over 14. 10 plus or minus 2 root 67 over 14. Uh, now, a lot of calculators will just do this for you. You can just type it in. Uh, so simplifying, I've got 5 plus or minus root 67 over 7. Now those are my two different solutions. You can come up with a decimal approximation for those things if you want to. Let's check to see if our restrictions match those. They definitely don't. They are all uh, just rational numbers, and here we ended up with an irrational answer. You know, I feel like maybe we should do one more example. So here we have a, a maybe a bit more complicated looking example again. x squared plus 2x over x plus 2 equals 4x plus 6 over x plus 3. Let's start again by factoring. I see I have a quadratic here and I have a common factor there. And this one, actually both common factors, that's x times x plus 2. 
and over here 2 times 2x plus 3 and we look to see do we have any matching factors anywhere and we do because right here we have x plus 2 top and bottom as factors so let's divide those out leaving 1 on top and bottom and giving me the restriction that x can't be negative 2 now this one does not match it's very tempting you see 2x plus 3 and x plus 3 those don't match those are not identical because that coefficient 2 is different from the coefficient 1 down there so do not divide those out that would be very bad so let's simplify a bit here x equals 2 times 2x plus 3 and x plus 3 in the denominator well uh, we are ready to multiply both sides by x plus 3 to clear this denominator when we do we're going to record a new restriction so x times x plus 3 equals 2 times 2x plus 3 new restriction right now I'm going to record both of them so that we have them all in one place our original negative 2 and the new one it can't be negative 3 once again we could have read that right from the start because it was already um, these were easy to read because they were just linear binomials down at the bottom here okay time to expand and simplify this collect everything onto one side all right and time to factor looks like negative 3 and positive 2 yeah that looks good so we end up with that x is 3 or x is negative 2 now at this moment this is when you look back and say are these okay and they are not both okay one of them is okay but this one is what we call inadmissible or it's also called an extraneous solution it's extraneous because it's an extra solution that shouldn't be there because we've already disallowed this value negative 2 so the only solution is x equals 3. 